Lesson 6 is kind of a continuation of Lesson 5 where we'll talk more about adding algebraically. First let's talk about adding numbers with the same sign and then we'll talk about adding numbers with different signs. And we'll just be working with pairs of numbers right now. Eventually we'll add more than just two numbers to have to add. Let's just do some practice problems. For example, let's just do positive 5 and positive 3. So what we would do there is we just look at the numeral parts. When they have the same sign, we look at the numeral part or the absolute value. So we'd have 5 plus 3 is 8. And we give the answer the sign that both of the original sign numbers had. So the answer would be positive 8. Now, plus 5 and a plus 3, that's pretty obvious. This um, rule comes in handy with negative numbers. So like if we had negative 5 plus a negative 2, what we do there, we just think of that rule. We look at the numerals, not or the absolute value. So 5 plus 2 is 7. We give the answer the sign that both of those numbers had. So that would be negative 7, that answer. So when we're adding numbers with the same sign, we just look at their absolute values, add them together, give the answer the sign that those two numbers had originally. Now let's add some numbers with different signs. So let's try a negative 5 plus a negative 3, or plus a positive 3, excuse me. So those numbers will have different signs. Negative 5 plus a positive 3. So again, like when we're adding them with the same sign, we just look at the absolute values. And when they have different signs, we say 5 and 3 and we subtract those two. 5 minus 3, that would equal 2. Now we give the answer the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value. So 5 has a bigger absolute value than 3 and so it has a negative sign and so our answer is negative 2. Now if that doesn't make sense to you then do this on a number line. Just get you a number line. You may still need a little bit of, of help with that negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and I'll put 1 in there as well. And so just think about what you would do here. You would go to the left 5, you start at 0, go to the left 5, and then to the right 3, and so you end back up at negative 2, just like your answer shows there. So if you ever get confused on this, I mean, adding the way we're doing it now, it's kind of like a shortcut instead of having to work out a number line every time. But if you need to, at least visualize a number line in your head, and that may help you work with these problems and know why negative 5 plus a positive 3 equals negative 2 and why the rules work the way that they do as well. Let's try another one. Let's do positive 5 plus a negative 2. Okay, so we just look at the signs. We see we have opposite sign numbers. So the rule there is look at the absolute values, 5 and 2. Take the difference. 5 minus 2 would be 3. Give the answer the sign of the numeral with the greater absolute value. That would be the 5 again. And so the answer would be positive 3. Think about that. Just visualize a new number line. You would go to the right 5 then to the left 2, that would end you up at positive 3. In part B, we're going to add more than two numbers together. And let's just do some practice problems. The best thing to do here, and the, basically the rule to remember, is to add in pairs when you're adding algebraically like we're doing here. So let's just break these up. And we have two pairs here. You may have an odd number of numbers to add sometime, but you'll just have an extra one if you have an odd number to add. So here we have plus 5 and plus 3, and then we'll also add plus a negative 2 and a positive 1. So look at plus 5 and plus 3, same sign, so we just do 5 plus 3 is 8, and we give the answer the sign that both of those original numbers had. And then next, negative 2 and positive 1, we take the difference in those because we have two different signs. 2 minus 1 is 1. Give the answer the sign of the 
numeral with the greater absolute value, that would be the 2, it has a negative sign in front of it. So we have a negative 1. Okay, now we add this pair, plus 8 and negative 1. Different signs, so we take the difference in them, 8 minus 1 is 7. Give the answer, the sign of the number with the greater absolute value, that would be the 8. So plus 7 is the answer. Let's do another one. Positive 9 and a negative 12 plus a positive 3 and a positive 6. First, let's look and see what our pairs are. We've got a pair there and we have another pair here. So let's go ahead and add in pairs. A positive 9 and a positive 12, we have different signs. So take the difference in those absolute values. 12 minus 9 would be 3. Give the answer the sign of the numeral with a greater absolute value, and that would be the 12, and so that would be negative 3, plus negative 3 plus positive 6. And so we take the difference again because they have different absolute values, or different signs, I mean. 6 minus 3 would be 3, and that would be a positive 3 because the 6 has the greater absolute value and it has a positive sign in front of it. Then add those two pairs, negative 3 and a positive 3. So we take the difference in them. 3 minus 3 is 0. And so this is neither negative or positive. Neither one of those numbers, since they're the same, has a greater absolute value than the other one. So 0, that is neither positive or negative. In case you didn't know that already, 0 is not a positive number, it's not a negative number, it's just 0. In part C of this lesson, they want you to do these problems by inserting parentheses mentally. Now, what they mean there is, like in our previous problems, we've had parentheses around each numeral and then a plus sign in between. So, what they'd want you to do, and let's just go ahead and write it out instead of just doing it mentally, we would say, negative 4 and put parentheses around that and then plus a negative 2 and then plus a negative 3 and plus the absolute value of 9. Now why would you want to do that? Well remember the reason is because you're trying to add algebraically, you're adding sign numbers and so you don't just think minus 4 or minus 2, you think minus 4 plus a negative 2. And so let's go ahead and add in pairs. And we'd have minus 4 plus a negative 2. And so those have the same sign, which is a negative. So we add them together. Negative 6 would be the answer there. Let's put parentheses around that. And then plus negative 3 plus 9, or the absolute value of 9. Well, the absolute value of 9 is just positive 9. So we'd have negative 3 plus 9. Take the difference in those. That would be 6. Give that 6 a positive sign. And now we add those two together. And we see that they're opposites again. Negative 6 plus a positive 6. Take the difference in those. That would be 0. So our answer is 0. Now in that problem, we really didn't insert the parentheses mentally. We just rewrote the problem and put parentheses around everything. This next problem, let's try to just do the parentheses mentally and not have to write them out. If you need to, though, go ahead, especially when you're doing the problems in the problem set or the test. But again, you'll want to eventually not have to do all those parentheses, mainly because it's just a little more time consuming. So on this problem, let's really try to add parentheses mentally. And so we could think of pairs here, add in pairs, negative 2 plus a negative 1. Let's go ahead and do that. Same sign, so we add the absolute values. That would be 3. Give them their original sign, negative 3. Now, go to n absolute value of negative 4, but we would have negative 4 for the answer there. Because we have absolute value of negative 4, which is 4, and then a negative sign in front of it. So let's just go ahead and write the rest of the problem out. Sometimes those absolute value ones can be a little bit confusing, so you don't want to do a whole bunch of work in your head. That's why I went ahead and just wrote it out instead of adding that absolute value of negative 4 to the 6. 
in algebra, you'll always find that there's a balance between doing the work in your head and doing it on paper. And especially when you're working with negative numbers, if you do too much in your head, more than likely you'll make a, a simple careless mistake. But it just takes one to get the problem wrong. So let's continue here. Let's add the negative 3 and the negative 4. We would say negative 7 there. And then we'll add a positive 6 and a negative 5. That would give us a positive 1. And so now we have negative 7 and a positive 1. And we think to ourselves, negative 7 plus a positive 1. Take the difference in those. That would be 6. Give them the sign of the greater numbers sign. So that would be a negative sign. So our answer is negative 6. Keep up with those negative signs when you're doing these problems. Write out as much as you need to to help you get through them. And then finally, section D, that's on subtraction, just an algebraic subtraction definition. Basically, it's stuff that we have already covered. If you had two numbers and you did A minus B, in algebra we think of adding algebraically. That's the same thing as A plus a negative B. So, just something to keep in mind there. For example, in practice problem H, the negative 2 minus 1. That's the same thing as negative 2 plus a negative 1. 6 minus 5 is the same thing as 6 plus a negative 5, and so on. You put the parentheses around it to help you think of it as adding a negative number instead of doing subtraction. That's just kind of how algebra is because in algebra you work with a lot of negative numbers. Okay, well that's all for lesson 6.